I had a client and I got him a volunteer job, which is way harder than you think you need a police check, for example like it's harder to get a volunteer job than a real job but I, we got him in a volunteer job and he had to fold pieces of paper, letters it was, he worked at a charity he had to fold pieces of paper in three so that he could put them inside envelopes and, and then the letters which were in a pile had to be matched with the proper envelopes which were also in a pile but some of them were French and some of them were English so the French ones had to be matched carefully to the French envelopes and, and then if, you know, if there was one envelope out of, out of order well then he had to figure out whether it was the papers that were out of order or the letters that were out of order and then some of the letters had photographs attached to them and you weren't supposed to bend the photographs but they weren't always in the same place so that meant you had to figure out how to fold the paper in three a bunch of different ways without creasing the photograph and then it, the other thing is and I re never realized how difficult it is to put a piece of paper in an envelope till I watched someone who couldn't do it and he probably had an IQ of about 80 you know, if you met him on the street you wouldn't think anything different of him he was a normal looking guy had some other problems um, I trained him to fold those damn papers for like 30 hours and he got reasonably good at it but, you know, if you're good at it and you probably all are you fold it and the edges line up exactly like really exactly, the tolerance is probably half a millimeter, something like that then you do the second fold and the tolerance is the same but let's imagine that the first fold you, you're out by an eighth of an inch and the second fold you're out by an eighth of an inch so it's a little crooked and that means in total you're out by a quarter of an inch and then it won't fit in the damn envelope so then you kind of crumple the envelope when you put it in there and then it gets stuck in the sorting machine and so he sweated blood trying to do that job and he eventually, they eventually planned to fire him so imagine what that's like, eh? you know, you can't get a job and then so you get a job at a charity as a volunteer and a charity decides to fire you you know, I mean really, that's just so I talked to the woman who was running it and suggested that that might be a little on the devastating side I mean, she had her if you were, have an IQ of 116 to 130 which is 85th percentile and above so it's one person in 8 up to one person in 130 I believe is 85, 90, 95? is it 95? I think it's 95 one person in 8 to one person in 20 then you can be a attorney, a research analyst, an editor, an advertising manager, a chemist, an engineer, an executive manager, etc that's, that's the now, that's not the high end for IQ, by the way. You know, that it can go up, well, it can go up indefinitely, although there's fewer and fewer people as it goes up. So, if you want to be the best at what you're doing, bar none, then having an IQ of above 145 is a necessity, and maybe you're pushing 160 in some situations, and maybe that's make, make, making you one person in 10,000 or even one person in 100,000. And then also, to really be good at it, you probably have to be reasonably stress tolerant and also somewhat conscientious so you, you know people and you think well why is it that smart people are at the top of dominance hierarchies and the answer to that in part is because they get there first right I mean everything's a race roughly speaking and the faster you are the more likely you are to be at the forefront of the pack and intelligence in large part is speed that's not all of it is so if you're moving towards something difficult rapidly the faster people are going to get there first so IQ of 115, 110 to 115, so that's 85th to 73rd to 85th percentile. Copywriter, accountant, manager, sales manager, sales analyst, general manager, purchasing agent, registered nurse, sales account executive. Uh, if you look at universities, the smartest people are, they're above this. Who are the smartest people at university? What do you think? Mathematicians. mathematicians. Physicists and mathematicians, right, right. I could tell you who's on the other end, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to though. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, okay. 
going down the, now 103 to 108 is slightly above average, right? 60th to 70th percentile. Store manager, bookkeeper, credit clerk, lab tester, general sales, telephone sales, accounting clerk, computer operator, customer service rep, technician, clerk, typist. So you see at this level, people, are, people have some technical skill and some ability to deal with complex things. Okay, that's dead average. 100 is average. Dispatcher in a general office, police patrol officer, receptionist, cashier, general clerical, inside sales clerk, meter reader, printer, teller, data entry, electrical helper. 95th to 98. Machinist, food department manager, quality control checker, security guard, unskilled labor, maintenance, arc welder, die setter, mechanic. Good, good IQ range for relatively qualified tradespeople. 87 to 93. Messenger, factory production worker, assembler, food service worker, nurse's aide, warehouseman, custodian, janitor, material handler, packer. Now, what you're seeing, what you're starting to see is that as you move down the hierarchy, the jobs get simpler, they're more likely to be assigned by other people, or they're repetitive. Because what IQ predicts to some degree is how rapidly you can learn something, but once you've learned it, it doesn't predict how necessarily how well you do at it. And so, the more repetitive jobs tend People with lower IQs are more suited to more repetitive jobs. Under 87, is there something? Well, no. Right. That's a big problem. And it's something our society has not addressed at all. Jobs for people with IQs of less than 85 are very, very rare. So what the hell are those supposed, people supposed to do? It's like one, it's 15% of the population. What are they supposed to do? Well, we better figure it out, because one of the things that's happening too is that as the, as the high IQ tech geeks get a hold of the world, the demand for cognitive power is increasing, not decreasing, right? You want to be a teller? Well, you know, those checkout machines, they're not so simple. You want to work at McDonald's? You think that's a simple job? You don't see robots working at McDonald's. And the reason for that is that what McDonald's workers do is too complex for, for robots to do. So. Well, so this is a discussion that no one wants to have, but that's okay. It, it's still a problem, and it has to be dealt with. So the U.S. government, I think I told you this at one point already, it's illegal to induct anyone into the U.S. Army if they have an IQ of less than 83, right? It's about 10% of the population. Because the U.S. Army, and they've been doing IQ testing since IQ testing began, because they want everybody they can possibly get into the Army, because in peacetime, they use it as a way of moving people up the socioeconomic ladder, and in wartime, well, obviously, you need as many soldiers as you can get your hands on. And so you're not going to be any pickier than you have to be. So when the U.S. Army says it's illegal to induct anybody into the armed forces if they have an IQ of less than 83, then you know that they've done it for absolute necessity. Right? And when people have made a finding that contradicts what they want to hear and they're doing it out of absolute necessity, you can be reasonably true that it's one of those facts that just won't bloody well go away. And so you might think, well, if there's nothing for someone with an IQ of less than 83 to do in the army, what makes you think that there's something that they can do in the general population? And then the issue is, you know, because the conservatives will say, well, they should just work harder. It's like, sorry, that ain't going to fly. And the liberals will say, well, there's no difference between people anyhow. And you can just train people to do everything. And that's wrong. So they're both wrong. And they're seriously wrong. And the fact that neither side of the political perspective will take a good, cold, hard look at this problem means that we're going to increasingly have a structural problem in our societies. Because we're complexifying everything so rapidly that you can't find employment unless Increasingly, unless you're intelligent, you guys are really going to face this, you know. Lawyers are disappearing like mad. And the reason for that is, you can look it up online. Increasingly, you can do things yourself if you're smart. And so, like the working class people have been wiped out pretty nicely over the last 30 years by, by automation and various other things. It's the low end of the white collar class that's coming up next. So I'm not saying that lower lawyers are in the low end, but low end lawyers are in the low end of the white collar class. So there's still going to be plenty of positions for people who are creative and fast on their feet and super smart. In fact, those people are going to have all the money, and that's already happening to a great degree. Really make a difference, you know, I mean, you guys, average IQs, probably 125, 130. At, at 115, you're at the 85th percentile, and, and 115 would barely get you going for, for a hard university. 
130, you're probably graduate school material, you know, 145, you're up there at the range where you can probably do pretty much whatever you want, although as you get smarter, the scatter between your abilities increases, so you might have a very high verbal IQ but not be so good at mathematics or the other way around. But it's a massive contributor to lifetime success, and I don't know what to do about that, I mean, why do smart people make more money? Well, they get to where the edge of production is faster. So if you have a thousand people and you rank order them by IQ, the smart people are going to come up with the new ideas first. And they're going to have more ideas. And they're going to strategize better. And, you know, with an IQ of 90, which is 15% of the population, you think about that, it's 15% of the population. That's pretty much the threshold for reading instructions and being able to follow them. So, you know, and our society is increase, increasingly sophisticated, so it's by no means obvious. You know, the liberals think, well, this society is unfair because there's unemployment, and the conservatives think, well, there's a job for everyone, and, but none of them think, well, there are massive, massive, massive differences in people's ability, far greater than anyone realizes, and that poses a structural problem. 